I think this is the coolest 911 that you can own. It's not the fastest 911. That would be the new GT2 RS, which can lap the Nurburgring in 6 minutes and 47 seconds. And it's not the most expensive 911 ever. A 917K from Steve McQueen's movie Le Mans sold for 14 million at Pebble Beach. So why is this the coolest 911? It's the last and best of the pure 911s. So this is a 1984 911 Carrera. It is technically in what is generally accepted as the second generation of the 911s, which ran from about 73 to 88. See, the generation that followed, the 964 911, came with a host of new technologies an electronically controlled transmission, a completely redesigned chassis, newly introduced power steering, the 964 even featured an active rear spoiler which raised its speed, all the way back in 1989. And while these technologies certainly made for a modern, faster 911, they also changed the character of the car. This isn't a car that's gonna hold your hand in anything from daily driving to really getting on it in a curvy road. You have to understand the way that this car works. You have to know how it feels when it's behaving well and know when something's going wrong. You can listen to this car and diagnose it while you're driving down the road. This is a car where every input has a direct output. There are very few assists in this car. And this is not a car that you can just jump in and drive perfectly. It's got some character and you need to learn how to operate this car. I, every car I jump into, there's a bit of a learning curve, and especially the older you go, typically the more temperamental they can be. And this is no exception. The owner, Tomas, who's next to me, has taught me that, especially for the air-cooled 911s, when you're shifting, if it's not smooth enough to operate with two fingers into every gear, you're forcing it. And if you work with it, it will work with you. For example, yeah, just okay. be smooth with it, as smooth as you can with the transmission. That was a very easy first. Yeah. Sometimes it, it gets a little harder, you'll see. Oh, I went into neutral. Second. No, it didn't go in. Oh, okay. Clutch all the way in. Oh, wow, it's yeah. back there. Yeah, but that was not smooth. So yeah. is that third? It seems like it. Yeah, yeah, you're on third. Sweet. Learning to drive this car is an exercise in communication. You have to ask it, are you ready for third? Do I need to downshift? and it will respond, give it more gas, stay in it, I've got the grip. It sounds cheesy, but it's true. And the reward for getting it right is so satisfying. It's like the car becomes your partner in your efforts. You slowly begin to synchronize. And of course we have to talk about the engine, Porsche's famous flat six. This is the biggest displacement you could buy. It's a 3.2 liter up from the three liter of the last generation. It's naturally aspirated, it makes 200 horsepower, and most importantly, it's air-cooled. Now, I personally never understood why people loved the air-cooled 911 engines. I mean, to me, a water-cooled engine is faster, more modern, and more reliable. What's not to like? But as I talked to the owner, I began to understand that it's less about the performance of the engine and more about the spirit of it. See, Porsche had a certain mantra when making its cars. It took the one silhouette that we know, borrowed the air-cooled technology from the VW Beetle, and year after year perfected it, continuously pushing the envelope, pushing that technology as far as it could go. Throughout the years, nobody was able to make an air-cooled engine quite like Porsche. Now, I didn't get to spend a ton of time with this 911, but even in the little bit of time that I got, this car put me in touch with what the 911 is supposed to do. Even back in the day when there weren't electronic stabilizers and hydraulic steering or any of that fancy stuff, this car was a performer. You worked with it and it helped you achieve great things. With telepathic steering and a raspy, powerful flat six behind you, this car continues to perform to this very day. It doesn't matter that it came out 30 years ago. This car will still get you in trouble. And let me tell you, this is one of the greats. Hey everyone, as always, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, go tell a friend. Let's grow this Checkpoint family and see how big we can make it. 
Then, of course, be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you, Tomas, for lending me the 911. It was a total blast. If you have a cool car you'd like to see featured on the show, email me. There's a link down below, and I will respond as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and keep driving.